Hey, welcome to the uh, Art of Comics podcast. You know, or whatever we, we're a YouTube channel. I don't know where we are. Today we're something special. First off, we have Ariel Celestino. I'm very excited to have you here. As always, you're a treat. You add uh, clarity and, and and institutional knowledge of the business. So I appreciate that. And we're gonna do something a little different. So today I thought I am a huge fan of commentary tracks. When I bought a my first DVD player, I was in college, and the first DVD we bought was Fight Club, and we bought Being John Malkovich, and we bought these DVDs that had commentary tracks. Yeah. Because at the time, that you just didn't get that. You're like, oh, commentary. I get to hear the actor or the director talk about the movie through the movie, and that was a mind blow. We could hit the button, Huge. and there's different audio. What? So. And I'm the type of guy who watched the Lord of the Rings movies with all five commentary tracks. Yeah, I've, I've listened to too, them all because I love commentary tracks. I just love to hear the the you know it's process. How it's, the process. It's how how it's made, how the sausage is made, and the struggles, all the little all that stories. I love that stuff. So I thought, what if two guys who don't really know anything do a commentary <laughs> track <laughs> who weren't there? who don't have the experience of it, but who like it, fanboys, talk about one of our favorite artists of all time, uh, both of ours, uh, is Mobius. Talk about uh, Jean Girard. So there is a documentary done by the BBC uh, that was done years ago, and it's actually on YouTube. So I'm going to put a link right now. If you go into the description of this video, you'll see the link there. Click on that link, and that is the link for this video. The video itself is 52 minutes and 15 seconds. So I'm gonna count us down. What you're gonna do is you're going to open that in another window or tab. You're gonna play that video and listen to us, okay? So when we tell you, we're gonna hit it, you're gonna play it, we're gonna play it. You can listen to us while you watch that, okay? That's one option. Or you turn us off and you just watch that because it's so good. <laughs> The you should watch option. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to watch that first. Yeah. Okay. So Regardless. watch it without us if you want. And then listen to us. Uh, if you're really good, you can listen, you can watch it uh, because it's all subtitled. So you could read that unless you know French uh, and then listen to us. But either way, you got to watch it. It's great. We both love it. And I thought it'd be fun to like uh, chat about it. I watched it uh, this morning again. So I made a few notes. Uh, so we'll talk about it. And, and so we will not be stopping it. We're just going to go through and see That'll what happens. So um, let me know, Ariel, if you're ready, because I'm, I'm ready here with the play button ready. I'm, I'm, my finger's hovering over the- uh, You're hovering button. over. Okay. So there's a white screen that says Avanti Media Production, correct? Yeah. Okay. That's where we're at. Okay. So here we are, everybody. Uh, you- at home listening, here we go. One, two, three, go. Here's there some music. Are. Okay, with Morgog Loves Company. Don't know who that is. Don't know either. Uh, and so these are channels. Yeah, I noticed like an Italian channel there, different. This was on BBC. Uh, so this was aired, you know, and I guess in another place, a bunch of places. First off, the music, dude. <laughs> we gotta talk about this synth, yeah. right? Heavy I love this kind synth. of stuff. This like you like, yeah, like early, uh, like nineties, like eighties, kind of like craft yeah. worky, right? A little bit of that, maybe. Yeah, electro. Yeah, electro rock. Um, this is like a little computerized version of a, uh, you know, Mobius is like a. In call. Have you ever the, seen uh, the animated, three D movie? I think it's produced in china that was based on some mobius artwork it's called into the mobius strip or something like no, that no i'm writing it down this is what this sort of animation reminds, like the, me reminds of. you of it yeah huh and then here we have arzak yeah arzak yeah i mean this is pretty lo-fi guys and i don't know yeah. what year this was i probably should have looked it up it, i think it's like mid 90s yeah I, I believe uh, so it's a little lo-fi but i think it's cool it's it's super cool I mean, you know. Whole... Yeah, it might have been later than that. It might have been later. Right. You think so? And here's our Here first he look at uh, Mobius. Here he is, dude. Get out. Blueberry. I, lo I love the blueberry. Yeah. Oh, here's your guy. Here's yeah. your guy. 
Jodorowsky. The visionary. Yeah, he's he's if, if, he's crazy. I love him. If Jodorowsky's calling you a genius, that's pretty good props. Yeah, and here I would love another to another collaborator. Would, oh yeah, dude. You know, I've never read that. The uh this thing here, the the Silver Surfer. I haven't read it yet. I oh, I've got it. this. Yeah, yeah. Do you have I, it? Yeah, my it's, a friend of mine gave me the, the sing, Yeah, I think the single issues are. A friend of mine gave me the single issues for a birthday like years ago. Oh, it wasn't an album at first. It started, it was singles. Came, and then it came, it, it's like a two oh. issue limited series. Yeah. Oh. There's Jim, Jim Lee. Lee. Look how young he is right there. Yeah. This has got to be uh, late 90s, I think, early. Year. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Mignola. Is Mignola. Yeah, it's amazing how wide ranging his influence is, right? Like, oh, yeah. When oh, I discovered yeah. him, part of the uh, appeal to me was that, like, none of my comic book reading friends knew about him because everybody was into like american comics yeah so it felt like that underground band that you discovered but like over the years he's so incredibly well known and rightfully so yeah well and i remember reading like you know wizard magazine you know in like the, the 90s 91 92 and they didn't really talk about European stuff, even like the artist, you know, yeah. Jim Lee, McFarlane. None of those guys ever talked about about this stuff. It was like too, a whole other be- realm. Maybe also they do too. now, but back then, I feel like it was about talking about John Romita or Busima yeah. or Joe Kubert. You know what I mean? They stick to the American stuff. They, I never heard pros. I think too there was a, a sort of at that time too. The early '90s with Image was like a rebirth of uh, American comics too, with with the Image yeah. guys like. You know, here's the fifth element, which I love. I don't yeah. care what anybody did says. Did he design? Did he do like production design? Is that what it was? Or what or was it just inspired by? There was some production design involved. I know Mezieras uh, did uh-huh. a lot of production design for this, who is the yeah. guy that uh, did Valerian, mm-hmm. the, the comic Valerian. Yep, yep. But like this, all this stuff is clearly, I know yeah. there was a lawsuit involved too. Oh, was there? Yeah. Uh, uh, Dean Gerard sued uh, Luc Besson over some like uncredited thing. So I don't know mm-hmm. if it was, it, it was it's so clearly there. like when I saw fifth oh. element, it was like yeah. Mobius or Enki Bilal brought to, brought yeah. to life to me. Yeah. Wouldn't that have been cool to go to this convention? Oh my God. Or book signing, you know, the shop or whatever this is. And yeah. He's so cool. I heard he was a really sweet guy too. Whenever you really? hear him like talked about by other professionals having met him. Yeah. He, they always hold him in high regard as like, you know, as a person, like not as like a guy who is an ale or anything like that, yeah, which is yeah. kind of rare. Like somebody that successful and that well known to be. Yeah. Level head headed. And, and right. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Kind of like that. Yeah. The Pope of comics. Wow. I forgot about that actually till I watched this. Yeah. That's a great line. You don't become an artist to become obscure. <laughs> yeah. You do it to be known. In, a, in any case, yeah, or just to yeah. leave your mark, right? Yeah. Like even- yeah. We should definitely do an episode of Sal Bass. <laughs> now that we've talked oh about God, Sal Bass man. a couple of times, because I want to hear your story too. Yeah. Uh, I started getting into him just this week. I'm like, oh man, this guy's great. Yeah, he's amazing. Another amazing person. This part is interesting too, where he gets in about his upbringing. And I don't think okay. he's ever really talked about that in like interviews yeah. before or anything. I really noticed the way he's holding his pen here, the, the nib. It's really loose. It's it, yeah, he like, feels like, like he a does pencil. It, and he feels like there's not a lot of pressure. There's not a lot of force. And it's kind of high up too. I hold mine, my nib like yeah, really close, close in, but he's kind of back a bit. And I'm like, yeah. I wonder if he just gets a little bit more of an expressive line, a little looser look to it. It's probably better on his hand too, because he's not putting so right. much. A little more balanced. You no know, force. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I, 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 I look. I look at it as when you hold a pencil further back, like you're more yeah. involved with the gesture kind of thing. Like when you do exactly. life drawing, you usually yeah. hold your pencil no, no, like yeah, that a little no, for sure. Yeah. And I think, I think he like, you lose a little bit of like tightness of control, but then you kind of get a little bit more looser. Uh, and, and 
that's a lot because he obviously has control from years and years. Like if you look yeah. at the earlier mo uh, the blueberry stuff, yeah, so incredibly well, detailed well, he, and oh yeah, he, and he mentions he started working at fifteen. He was fifteen yeah. when he got his first gig. I mean, yeah, and he's so prolific. He said he's done so much work. Yeah, it's amazing. That was and interesting that talking too. about the new wave. Because, you know, this around is around the same time as the French New Wave films, right? So you have like Truffaut, Godard, yeah. all these like film creators in, in France doing this whole new cinema style. And interesting, like taking uh, an American art form, right? Because like comic yeah. books to me always yeah. primarily seemed, or the more well-known comics and more like financially successful ones, I guess you'd say. And then they take that stuff and mutate it into their own. Like, you know, yeah. Truffaut and all those guys were, were fans of American cinema. And then yeah. they took what they could get from American cinema and then yeah. spin it around and like. Yeah. Well, I just, I find it interesting that the parallel with the film movement, there's like a comic movement. Yeah. Like you even have like Fellini and Manera. Fellini and Manera yeah. were friends. They knew each other. And yeah, Fellini was right, like a huh? cartoonist. So Fellini did cartoons when he was, a, you know, so, so there's this really, there's very similar kind of paths, yeah. you know? And, yeah. I remember uh, and, like, and, didn't and Fellini, cool. isn't there a story of Fellini meeting like Stan Lee or something like that? Maybe. I know that he was friends with Minera. I don't know if he met Stan Lee. He probably yeah. did. But. Yeah. This is interesting too, going into Mexico and his uh, yeah. fascination and, with the South. The, which uh, is Southwest. incredible because it's one oh, of, it's, one of the, hugest like influences yeah, on him as far him. as like yeah these iconic images of yeah I, I think that's what you think of when you think of of mobius you think of desert scenes sparse you know sedona yeah. arizona stuff like that I, i've always had an affinity for that too not that i've ever lived in the desert but yeah. like going through arizona or just yeah you know, Probably from growing up Frank in the city, not being all exposed kind of to it. it, it feels like another world when when I'm out there. Yeah, and too, and seeing it like countless cowboy movies and stuff like. Oh yeah. Once upon an yeah. once upon a time in the West, where they're pulling up. Yeah. Uh, through Monument Valley, like just yeah, amazing oh, yeah. wide screen, like, like the Searchers, and yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Searchers and, too, like uh, and you know, John Ford, um, John Ford stuff, and. You know, westerns are huge in Italy and, and in France. Yeah, and, Italy, and you know, they love that stuff because it's so foreign to them. It's like a yeah, alien world. You know, you know, like South America too. Like a lot of uh, comics in Argentina that I picked up when I was there in the seventies were they like, like the westerns. A lot of westerns, a lot of really? war stuff. Yeah, it's huh. interesting. Like World War Two, kind of like yeah, oh, okay. Huh. So it's always just I love idealized. Those sketches. I was looking at these sketches and went, oh man, those would be cool. Yeah. Like just to have one of those little like just drawings he does. So 63. Um, yeah. 15 years old. Oh my gosh. Like he's like, oh shucks. Yeah, so cute. That's so cool. So this but but if you look at this as a kid. It's pretty <laughs> badass, right? You can't even I mean, get this level of sophistication. Isn't that crazy, though? It's yeah. really good. It's like, wow, that it's clean. It's a design cool. well. So here he starts talking about Pilot, I guess is how you pronounce it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is kind of like the forerunner of heavy metal, like uh, metal herlot, I guess, in a way. Mm. Another big anthology. Mm-hmm. France. Can you find those? Are those? Yeah, you can you find know? a few on okay. eBay. I haven't eBay really done a deep dive on them. I, yeah. I've always wanted to, but like, you know. Yeah. Stan. Stan the man. You got to love Stan the man. Exactly. You got to love Stanley. I love yeah. his painting too. His illustration is good. Yeah. I mean, it's not, he's not just like a, you know, a white and black uh, inker. He can, uh, Fully He's render stuff. One of the most well-rounded yeah. artists to work yeah. in comics ever. Yeah, but that's a whole other skill set. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's a whole other thing to learn. Like even Toth, those guys that we love, they didn't paint 
You know what I mean? They yeah. didn't, they weren't painters, but this guy could do that. He could do, uh, yeah, just anything visual. You ever seen Kirby's <laughs> paintings? Like his watercolor no. paintings? I know he did like some fumetti type stuff, but like in the later collage, part of his, but yeah, collage. Stuff, but he I did a lot of, uh, there's a lot of painted stuff really? uh, from his time when he worked at Ruby Spears, the animation studio. Oh, oh really? It's like a, Huh. Got a video of it. It's uh, I've got a bunch of like this card set that goes into that that has all this concept art from that period. Mm -hmm. So they're huh. like hundreds of like different concepts that he came up with at Ruby Spears. It's pretty huh. amazing. That's cool. Another prolific genius. I love the blueberry stuff. I, yeah. I love it. And it's, I think uh, he colored this stuff too. At least did color guides for this, right? Like might have. I I don't know. He might have. Yeah. Great though. There you go. Met deadlines. Yeah. Go. Oh, being professional, man. <laughs> Dude, that that blueberry stuff is gorgeous. Some of the so best good. Yeah. comic stuff ever. It really I is. I mean, him and Joe Kubert come to my mind yeah. as like the yeah. premier Western artists. Yeah. Kubert's another guy, man. Yeah. And really, too, another like. I could see a lot of similarities in Cuber and some of Mobius' stuff like in the pen work, how they both look like they go straight to ink, how they yeah. both have very gestural lines. Yeah, yep. Be curious to like, having seen Mobius's, the way he holds his pen to like track down some Joe Cuber video and see. Yeah, yeah I'd be curious to see how, uses how a he uses brush approach. and stuff. Yeah. I like the lettering, just like simple things like that. Very cool. And here we go. These metal her log covers are always so oh, gorgeous. So man. cool. Yes, that's cool. Oh, this is oh, Drew's yeah. house, or is this, yep. this Drew Day? Yeah. Who's this guy's another one of mine. He's he's your big guy. I know. You yeah. love him. And Inky Bial's in this too. Look at this guy. Like just yeah. a classic Frenchman just with a cigarette smoking, in his hand. Black freaking <laughs> no. clothes. Just like like he could have uh, hung out with those yeah. those other French filmmakers, New Wave uh Oh yeah. Yeah, he could yeah. Right? I mean, like he's exactly crew. that kind of guy. Yeah, it that's that's the thing. The same guys. Same circle. so exciting it's almost like they're like the inklings you know there's this cr this small crew of yeah. just guys who are love sci-fi and they just want to do yeah. like adult yeah. comics and that's just really it's really neat i'm sure they fed off each other you know there's Maybe always like, been that sort of yeah, there's uh, yeah because you had frank frazetta and um al williamson and like those oh, guys oh, what oh, were yeah. they called they had even the, did they have uh, a name a yeah. Rat Pack type of name? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the they talk about it in the Frank Rosetta documentary a lot too, and it's it's documented elsewhere. Huh. But uh, yeah, and then and then like you know Bernie Wrights in Barry Windsor Smith, Jeff Jones, those guys. Yeah. Oh my God, that cross hatching is. It's like a, every generation has their little like crew, yeah. right? Like yeah. the William Stout and the Michael Kaluta and Charles Vess or the, you know what I mean? Like they have little crews. By the time he got to this point, like heavy metal, he was already like accomplished and like had cranked out thousands of pages. Yeah. Yeah. By the time we discovered him in the States, he had been doing it for a couple decades, right? Yeah. I mean, all these crazy cool uh, yeah. sculptures yeah. that he did in the background. Those yeah, guys they're, they're, they're hanging talking out about as this, a little, crew. little crew. Yeah. And if you go through like heavy metal, you'll see all those names pretty yeah. regularly, oh, yeah. especially the yeah. first couple of years. Those episodes that we did, those issues yeah. we did, that's all those guys. I love that they were buddies too. 
Yeah, it's really neat. And, and look they, at them. They, look how big that is. That's <laughs> no wonder, that's, right? Though that's got to be twenty. It's at least 18 by 24, but I think it's bigger. It's probably 24 by 36, maybe. It's huge. And he's not even on a slanted. Uh, no, he's just doing it on the paper, oh God, on I a, watch the table. That part just over and over again. Yeah. Cool studio. Well, that when you see his, his pages and they're like these incredibly detailed Worsy. pages, now you know yeah, why. The epic, yeah, because he, yeah. You know who else works really big like that? Uh, Liam Sharp. Liam Sharp does? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I had asked him about that, on, that. On, on uh or I didn't ask yeah. him about it, I asked him about something else. He, that's another really like sort of gracious guy. Uh, yeah. on uh, on YouTube he's pretty uh, not YouTube, Twitter, he's pretty approachable and like you ask yeah. him questions about stuff and he's, he's... Huh. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm always I guess I guess everybody used to use uh, work way bigger. Like Will Eisner back in the day. Yeah. I know Darwin Cook did, you know, yeah. Miller does, you know, a lot of those guys. That's big. Yeah, you look at the Wally Wood uh, artist edition and mm -hmm. it's pretty huge. Is it? Yeah. Oh, here's Susan, the guy too, Geiger. <laughs> Just a little artist from uh, yeah. Switzerland. Yeah, he's a crazy guy. <laughs> yeah. I know this makes me think of a bunch of other uh, cool artist documentaries too, like the yeah. one on Geiger, the most recent mm -hmm. one on Geiger is pretty good. I haven't seen it. Let's check it yeah, out. it's good. So clean, man. It's we so should do the Jodorowsky Dune now. Now I like oh, that. That's such a good one. <laughs> have you seen it? Have you only seen oh, yeah. it recently? I have. Oh, yeah, I have. Oh, yeah, I have. I have it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's great. I love it. It's a Lambo. Thank you, Bilal Cover. It's weird that he works on just a regular table, huh? Yeah. Love to see a Richard Corby documentary like this. That would be great. That would be yeah, really fun. I, I don't see him. I don't see. I don't think I've ever seen video interviews. Same for me, man. When I saw it, yeah. metal, it was like, who cares about superheroes? Yeah. I mean, I've since, I, I've since changed my mind, but it, the initial impact that it had on me was, I was like, obsessed yeah, it, with it. I think it's just natural you grow out of it because it yeah. is the kind of, uh, you know, adolescent like music. power you, fantasy you, stuff. Yeah. yeah you, kind you, of, you, you kind of start like, you gotta your, try stuff. your taste maybe get a little more sophisticated yeah. or something. Airtight garage. Need to reread yep. that. Yep, I do like his different. Uh, I mean, you could tell who it is, but he does deliberately kind of uh, change the the kind of tone and, and texture of the art to fit the story. That's crazy. I wonder, you know, looking at this and thinking about, <laughs> that's funny, <laughs> thinking about like, you know, when did Crumb come on the scene? Was he like late 60s, early 70s? Because I'm wondering if like, like I'm wondering if those 60s. like, those Zap guys were, were dialed into this yet or if, or if it was almost like, cause some of this gives me a little bit of that crumb feeling. Yeah, I don't I think I actually- if they, Or if they just, do not know it at all. Yeah, just from talking uh, to artists that I know that were active at that time, I don't think, I think heavy metal was the big eye opener for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and also too, at that time, you, uh, you had this, you, you know, surge of like American underground comics, like the height of like yeah. uh, uh, Spain Rodriguez. Yeah. Uh, but I'm wondering if like did, did Art uh, Spiegel? I'm wondering is, if like did Art Spiegelman know Mobius? Did 
did those guys in oh, San yeah. Francisco like that's you know, a good yeah you know, did they know especially this Spiegelman right at the time, because he's right? such a so almost uh you know such a scholar of the form I guess yeah. maybe I mean it's hard to tell because it take, we take so much for granted now because we we're like exposed to everything yeah. But back then they would have had to get ha physical copies of this. Right? Yeah, they would have you would, you would those, hear about yeah, you know about a story from magazine. somebody. Hey, I was in France yeah. and I saw this crazy magazine. You know. Yeah. Yeah. There's been a number of uh, galleries and showings of his work. There was one just like last year or the year before uh, that was supposed to be pretty darn amazing. Um, I think yeah. they do it pretty often. He's just so popular. Um, oh, this is great to get into. This. I didn't even know we were going to talk about this. That's cool. Yeah, I think this is the first time I really like that this came to my. Oh, no, that's not true because I remember reading about it in in H.R. Geiger's Necronomicon. He, he mm. has paintings from there. So, mm. but this is probably the most like detailed uh, part of him talking about it. This is like trilingual mm -hmm. He's he's a crazy person, but he's really is like that mad genius. Yeah, I, I really appreciate him. It's a character, but like also can back it up. You know, it's not. But he just reminds me. Uh, he reminds me of kind of like a Werner Herzog. Herzog. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know what I mean, he's got kind of a Werner Herzog kind of like way yeah, about him. The Chilean version. Yeah, the Chilean version. Werner's a lot more. Uh, if you need, he's to. a lot drier. Yeah, and not not as like. You ever see that documentary of Werner and he gets, he's up in the hills. Oh, Dan O'Bannon. Yeah, there's Dan O'Bannon. Uh, yeah, so this is like, uh, yeah. Talk about Alien. Yeah. This and, is interesting uh, too. Check this out. He's using yeah, like a, like a, a Cintiq and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Look at that. See? He's not afraid of the new tools. I wonder if he wow. did uh, Inside Mobius that way because have you checked Maybe. that out? No, no it's loose. on my wish list. I haven't bought it. Yeah. It's just a collection, right, of sketches. There's, it's not no, like it's, actual it's, stories. Or is yeah, it? it's like this free willing stream of consciousness thing about him. Okay. It's crazy. It's definitely worth checking yeah. out. Is it all black and white or is it colored? No, it's colored, but it's it's very oh. open. It's very like loose. Okay. Yeah. Like he drew it really quickly. Yeah. I heard so he goes I'm, fast, but yeah, he probably just went like through. that looks really like straight, straight yeah. to like not redrawing anything kind of thing. Yeah. Is he talking about Dan O'Bannon right here? I, I, I guess he must. Or, or, yeah. or Jodorowsky, I'm not sure which. Yeah, it wasn't. I could see it because Jodorowsky was already known and Dan O'Bannon was kind of like he had just done Dark Star with John Carpenter, but he wasn't yeah. really. That was pretty early on. Yeah. I mean, writing the story for Alien and coming up with that whole idea is. Yeah. You know, it's not the only thing Dan O'Bannon did, but just that alone might have been. Yeah, the, that you know. gave him a good, good life.
Isn't there a book of all of Ridley's? Uh, if there is, of I need to get or it. We talked about that. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I have seen them, but I've never seen a book collected with them. And I think mm. I've looked. That would be fun. Man, guy, Geiger or Geiger. I don't. He still don't. Yeah, know I don't know. I say but Geiger I love... is probably Geiger. Geiger. And then who's the other artist that worked on Alien? Chris Foss? Is that his Maybe. name? Yeah, that Maybe. did the uh, yeah. sort of uh, the vehicle design and all that. He just sounds spooky. Can we just say his voice is yeah. kind of like, he's sounds like, like a Harkonnen. <laughs> he's like a, Especially he's when like, he was younger, he looked like uh, Chekhov from Star Trek, from the original series, kind of. He always reminded yeah. me of evil Chekhov. Yeah, he's got like a Baron Harkonnen vibe to me. <laughs> just yeah. like, like yeah, a but movie. <laughs> if you haven't seen uh, any of the documentaries on him, definitely check him out because he's an interesting, interesting guy. And and also like, you know, may sound like we're throwing around the, the word genius, but these guys are artistic geniuses that yeah, we're talking they, about here. Like Mobius Jodorowsky, they inspire Geiger. generations of creators. Yeah. Like just this alone. This is like yeah. a sculpture. This is a set that yeah. Giger helped build. This, like, this is brilliant. <laughs> and what I love is that they, they never explain it in the movie. They never talk about it. It's just, you know, I think they call it the navigator or something, but we don't yeah. even know much about it. But we just they don't even call it that in the movie. That's yeah, basically movie, yeah. what everybody refers to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He worked on Tron, too, the original Tron doing designs for that. so pragmatic too you know mm -hmm. which is interesting because a lot of artists aren't even successful ones right you know so even while working in all these different uh you know working in movies and working in comics he like kept his head together yeah I always imagined he did well for himself, but like I don't even have any proof of that other than his renown, you know? Mm -hmm. You talking Mobius? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would assume, but. I mean, having so much stuff in print, and there's yeah. so much stuff that have, hasn't even seen uh, American right. translations either. Yeah. It's like there's a wealth of manga that hasn't been translated, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Until you get here. Yeah, wait till you come to <laughs> Woodland Hills right next to uh, Ariel here. <laughs> Woodland Hills is but so bad. The Hollywood. Warner Center. <laughs> Hollywood. Yeah, in, he, in the, in the I'm 70s. assuming he's not in Hollywood. I'm assuming he's in like, I don't know. Yeah, the hills. Which I don't know back then where a good spot was. Maybe even Tarzana. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully not Tarzana. Maybe Studio City. Law well, tomorrow. Yeah, well, Kirby was out here too, in like Thousand Oaks or yeah. something. This is such a great, great comic. Like, if you haven't, I'm sure most everybody has seen it at this point. If you're aware of Mobius. This is another piece. It's it, it's like a what 10, 12 page story that Dan O'Bannon yeah. wrote. And yeah. Mobius Illustrated and it's still one of the greatest pieces of yeah. science fiction ever, I think. Wow. Yeah, that's true. Ridley. Ridley Did he? Uh, who wrote? Who wrote the Ridley? Who wrote Blade Runner? The script. Uh, there's a couple of different screenwriters that adapted the Phil oh, K. Okay. Dick book. The uh, uh, Sleeping with uh, do do electric sheep dream in their sleep or something like no. that, <laughs> or is that something else? Do, uh, what is that? What is that one? That's do androids the, dream of electric sheep? Yeah, 
That's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. It's such but a the, great the, book, man. Yeah. I love Philip K. Dick, man. Yeah. Wasn't 12 Monkeys also like a Philip K. Dick story? Or what was that? I don't think so. I, I think, yeah, no, I think no, that, that was, was based on a uh, French on movie short. called Legity. Is that what that was? Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it's based off of that, which is like a famous sort of short film. Okay. Uh, French short film that's pretty it's much all told movie. in still photography. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I really love that super movie. interesting. One of my favorite Terry Gilliam. 12 Monkeys? Yeah. Terry Gilliam's. I mean, he gets a lot Brazil, of some of the Brazil's great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he says, great. but, but Brazil is, he's another guy who I feel is yeah, a genius yeah. too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Underrated, yeah. undervalued. Yeah. And, uh, and guess what? A cartoonist. Have you, yeah. you know, some parallels, right? Fellini, yeah. Ridley Scott, you know, who Saul just, Bass. I mean, Saul also, Bass. So, so it's like, was... it's, these, it's these illustrators and cartoonists are using these storytelling and visual ideas in the film. Right. I mean, they're two very different mediums, but they're definitely related, right? Because you're yeah. combining different elements, different sensory, yeah, uh, different Story. senses into into a single thing. Um, yeah. So yeah, Saul Bass. Uh, what I was going to say was like he designed the uh, shower scene in 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 uh, Psycho. Oh, so he? he storyboarded that whole thing. So oh. there, there's another like, you know. Uh, and all the amazing, uh, all the amazing uh, sort of uh, credits, uh, title sequences that he did were yeah. all. I was watching Sp Spartacus, and he actually was doing a lot of work on Spartacus, a lot of stuff, like like scout locations and stuff like that. So pretty funny. And Stanley Kubrick directed that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He doesn't like to say he does because uh, that was the one film that he had. It's like a ex influenced David by the, the scenario studio. yeah yeah he came he in have, later, he didn't have total actually. control he actually yeah, yeah. they fired a guy he came in after so he didn't have full control so he's like it's not really my film if i don't have full control i respect that you know when you're an art tour you know yeah. you gotta do. the ankle is another science fiction mm -hmm. you know you got to put that up there with like some of the greatest science fiction movies and novels yeah oh for sure you know okay i got a commercial with... just now did you get a commercial no. okay i'm back no i haven't yet i got one in the beginning did you okay i just got a little ad i like in a lot yeah um it is a bit of a like jumbly mess as far as like yeah. structure <laughs> as far as like i mean you know it, it, it yeah it's some you know i was listening to a david lynch uh interview and like i find parallels with jordorowski and lynch in some ways where like they both feel that they don't have to explain every last detail of the story like Lynch was going on about how the viewer should use their intuition, how sometimes you are just trying to capture a feeling and something that's yeah. bigger than just words and, and, and a verbal, yeah. uh, you know, thought out explanation. Sometimes you just feel the hair on the back of your neck rise up and you don't really know why. Like, yeah. And, and good art sometimes makes you feel like that. Like you listen to yeah. a really great song that really hits you in the right spot and, and you get that feeling. You see a great yeah. piece of art, you, you get that feeling. Mm -hmm. So I, I always give uh, Jodorowsky or Lynch a pass as far as like, oh, it's not going to be this linear plot that like I'm going to understand on a single viewing. It's something yeah. that I'm going to have to like just put that part of my analytical mind away and yeah. just enjoy it yeah well he's so he's into so much the spiritualism and the kind of metaphysical kind of yeah. you know these ethereal concepts that's what he's, he's trying to put these concepts into like visual images and and things and so you know that's hard and you have to kind of you think see, that way these guys create yeah. their own iconography yeah. guys like lynch guys like jordorowski guys like mobius yeah, yeah. You know, uh, in film, you know, there's there's a bunch of different examples. Kubrick, 
Ridley Scott, they each have their own sort of like little twist on visual mm -hmm. uh, iconography that, that nobody yeah. else used before them, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a nice documentary though. I like the little like little creative elements they're putting in here. Just, you know, I'm sure they Yeah. It's kind of BBC fun. BBC does good, you know, yeah. Does good stuff. Yeah. Like the Finding Dicko um Oh yeah. Documentary. Yeah. That was really great too. Right on. Yeah. I agree. Come to LA. I love LA. It's a lot of heat. It's a great, it's it. a great city. It's a great city. Calls him John, just like John. <laughs> this this always this always gets at me a little bit when Stan talks surfer? like that. Yeah. Very well known that it was a Jack Kirby. Yeah. Kind of. might it's actually fun working that way I yeah just recently did that with a friend of mine and it was uh, pretty just great result like i mean but back you got and forth, it back and forth kind of like i just basically told him the story over an email and he's like okay cool i get it what about this i'm not sure about this I'm not sure about yeah. that back with more like yeah and the, the end result was awesome. But you got to have a, a you know, talented artist who understands storytelling. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I like that face. I I do really like him. You know, and you always think of Mobius as being super detailed, but then mm -hmm. in some of these examples here, yeah, it's so clear lines, so so. Yeah. Yeah. Just no you know, cross hatching at all. Yeah. You know, Mignola had that line of saying, you know, I wonder if more Europeans will come and do these kind of mainstream yeah. books. But there really wasn't that big influx, right? I mean, there was the the British writers, you know, that came in like the late yeah. 80s, but there really wasn't a big, huge, like a French wave yeah, or yeah. Italian they wave get of like, yeah. pencilers. <laughs> they didn't get like, uh, yeah, Enki Bilal to do. Yeah, like, Bilal, Jule. Jule never did it, right? Jule like, doing like uh, or Captain America. Manera, or Manera did do a couple things, but later, much later. Yeah, but, and, like, and the heat know. he got for doing it. Yeah, the X Women or whatever. I yeah, I never read any of it. I probably should get it because I probably would like it. But yeah. Th these are always 
uh, I have this book that these, well, one of the books, I guess, that this stuff appears in is called Mobius Fusion. Oh, really? Yeah, and he does cool. a couple do of, like, like he does, like, Spider-Man. Uh, That's pretty fun. Iron I have Man. seen the Spider-Man one, yeah. 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 I've seen some of those. And, uh, yeah, Wolverine. Yep, straight up. He's straight a businessman. He doesn't around. think about complex as an art form. For him, it's an industry. Yeah. Mobius will be a little more tactful. Yeah. Jordorowski is all out of Fs. Yeah. He's just like. <laughs> yeah, and he's born that way, I think. Yeah, dude. He's like, because for him, it's about art. It is about yeah. art. Yeah. That's yeah. what motivates him. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the empire <laughs> oh yeah well that's yeah. probably a pretty popular feeling right now yeah <laughs> jordorowski's always been like that he's you know he's He's Chilean, but he lived in Mexico and France and, and yeah, uh, yeah, he, you know, in Spain and stuff. He's, and, and you know what? If I had been run around by these damn studios my whole career and having to grovel at these people my for years, I would get fed up too, right? I'm like, I'm over yeah. it. I'm over you guys. So I get it. I mean, a- everybody can probably identify with that at some point. Like at some point, you're working at yeah, a job like, to, oh. to survive, and you're like the shit that you got to put up with to do that. Is uh, because hmm. they don't think it'll make money. That's what it's about. Yeah. pragmatism yeah it's funny because he's dealing with these guys that are kind of on opposite ends of the spectrum guys like stan lee and guys like uh truly and jordorowski who are more like yeah. artists you know yeah true artists and, and he's kind of he's kinda able kinda to hang with yeah, yeah he's both, able to hang with both. both those kind of personalities that's yeah it's pretty Probably interesting because he's so mellow and he's just like, I mean, this, that's what he, he comes off as. Yeah, just definitely. like a really, you know, mellow guy who. Yeah, even, even his little, but, little bit of, of uh, explanation about what life is for him it, it, it is, you know, pragmatic and, and realistic and not, you know, even talking about this guy, he's just like, you know, hey, you know, things happen. Even in his divorce, he's like, Yeah, it's like came to mutual. Oh, wow, yeah, is that his collaborator on Blueberry? Okay, right, that's right. Yeah, that's another place I got to go when this whole thing blows over and travel becomes a thing again. Go to France and just go shopping yeah. for comic books. That would be really fun, man. Yeah. Still want to make it over to Japan for the same reason, too. Yep. I want to go to that Angdalem. Is it Angdalem yeah. is what it's called? Yeah. That's what I want to go. Oh, like art dealer, maybe? I think there's his wife. Okay. Imagine hanging out with Jordorowski. That would be yeah. a lot. 
<laughs> that'd be a lot to handle. Yeah, your wife's like your mom. <laughs> like, dude, strong. Strong women. Man. Yeah, shut up, dude. Blow me up here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> he cracks me up. Can we just have him? Can yeah. we just have him? He's great. You know, yeah. even you don't agree with like most of the shit he says. He just says it in such an entertaining yeah. way. But but I can't disagree with it. It is yeah. No, I, 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 it's spot on. I feel it's spot on. Yeah, it's a yeah. bold way of saying it, and and maybe not always. You know, tactful. Like you said, he's not very tactful. Yeah. And I, I got to imagine that that John Gerard is a better businessman just because of yeah. his, his personality. And the pragmatism yeah. has a lot to go. It goes a long way when you're yeah. trying to be a professional in anything. Yeah. Being able to maintain that level headedness is invaluable. When you're dealing with deadlines, you're dealing with clients, you're, you're dealing with, you know, all these different things that are kind of working against your artistic impulse and you're still managed to deliver. That's, that's a lot. I need a Drew Lay documentary. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. I'd love to see a conversation with Dan O'Bannon and uh, Jodorowsky. It's those two. It's got to exist. It's got to be some footage of that someplace. Yeah, someone, someone recorded a meeting. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Absolutely. Like this is that inside Mobius. Very fascinating philosopher. I, I mean, I kind of feel like maybe that helps him be a better artist. You know, yeah. this uh, well, way to like, you, uh, see if, see the world and, and see himself. I think I think if you're involved Gosh. in any kind of art, you at least. You have to have some level of introspection, right? And and yeah, you know, know the human condition, know what, yeah. know what, uh, what connects us, right? And, yeah, and even and and maybe if not, if you're not introspective, you're at least very heightened in in other ways of like perceiving your surroundings in a certain way, you know, because you know, being a great artist and being a good human being doesn't always go hand in hand. Actually, more times than others, some of the most genius guys are like the biggest yeah. a-holes ever, or you know, the biggest f-ups ever. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I've seen some of those panels, some of those drawings. In, yeah, uh, inside Mobius, it looks very yeah, much I like that it, style. I know there's, I think there's two volumes of it. Yeah, um, I need to, I need to pick one up. It's interesting. Okay, I'm really digging the music now. 
I need to get this soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get the soundtrack. Get that bass kick in. Yeah. Thank you, Bilal. Jim Lee. Yeah, that's that's great. great. That was a lot of fun, man. I really yeah, liked it. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, and that's some cool. Sexy that's a great woman documentary. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really good. Outro. Um that's what's great about youtube man there is stuff here that you can find it might be clipped it might be kind of formatted yeah. weird to not yeah. get like zapped but you can find this is actually really formatted well they didn't have to do much so that's that's nice um maybe the rights issues isn't the, isn't the problem that's why but uh really cool fun stuff maybe uh, let's keep sending each other these little fun links i said yeah, yeah. about sal bass uh it was short but I thought that was kind of fun i didn't know i didn't even know you had a history with him so i just sent it to you i'm like oh i bet you would like this and you're like yeah Dude, no he's i got he's, a shining thing now but the shining poster you showed us which was red uh it actually was yellow though right the original or the yeah right? i've okay. seen it in yellow okay. too okay. like that was actually a gift uh my wife worked for him uh at his studio in the uh, early '90s, called Bass Jaeger, and uh, okay. that was that was a present. I have a couple of Saul Bass posters. Uh, That's cool. Is there a book out with his like uh, designs and posters and things like that? Is there a Saul, uh, Saul I Bass just, book? Uh, happen to have. Shut up! What is this? Are it you was serious? Like, it's right on my bookshelf over here. Whoa! Yeah, that's it's a, a huge it's called book. A, a life in uh, oh, wow. film and design. So, yeah, and then. Oh wow! It's just tons Dude. of. Uh, okay, I gotta look for that. I'm gonna look yeah, it's it up right it's, now. A, it, it's. I'm gonna look it up right now. <laughs> I think I got it uh, for a uh, Christmas or a birthday present or something because everybody knows I'm a big salt bass. Uh, fan. Yeah, there it is. It is uh, eighty-five bucks, but on Amazon it's fifty-seven. Yeah, I think it's probably that much because it's it may be out of print. Yeah, so I'm going to uh, save it. Yeah. My list. Boom. Boom shakalaka. Okay, cool. I'm stoked about that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's massive too. That might be really nice. I'm getting yeah. in design. I'm like, I got the, uh, I got this book. Um, here, let me share it real quick. There's, there's all kinds of good stuff in this book. There are, uh, I'm really liking the the uh, film the the film design of Mandalorian, so I picked oh, yeah. that up. I love those kind of books. Yeah, and I want to get the one on um, Into the Spider Verse. I want to get the the new yeah. Blade Runner movie. I want to get the new Mad Max movie. So there's these certain movies yeah. that I really liked. I've I'm got like, a I need to get the too. books. Like if there's one on Bl a Blade Runner, the original, or yeah, or I've Alien. Got, uh, I've I want to get the one these. on the most recent uh, Tron movie. Do I've you? got a bunch of them from uh, Neil Blomkamp movies yeah, like yeah. Chappie like District, and uh, yeah, Alessio, District Nine, all that stuff. District yeah. Nine. Those are all really super cool. I'm because just, he gets... I'm getting into illustration. Just yeah. I really like. I don't know. I just I like I like concept, the environment concept stuff. Design concept design is yeah, yeah. it's like a really interesting. Yeah. Branch of illustration for sure. Yeah. That's I like a it. whole discipline on itself. Oh, right? for sure just to like set emotion and tone through color, you know, and through shape. And so just like breaking things down into like those basic art principles yeah. right, and elements. So, um, so I'm gonna, I might get a couple more of those cause I'm really enjoying that. So, um, cool. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much. I love your thank shirt, you. by the way, you are like oh, yeah. out. I should have brought, Nerd. I should have worn my, I should have worn, I actually have, an you know, when I was thinking too. of that, I when I was putting it on, it's like, doesn't, Andy also have like a I do. Shirt. I, I should do. check with him so we're I not should. like twinsies on that. Yeah. I don't have that one though. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, I have one that says Wayland Industries. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay. It's like the bad That's guy. another good one. Yeah. yeah. But uh thank you very much for your time. I appreciate thank you. Thank you, man. That was fun. Me. And thanks everybody for watching. And um we'll see you guys next time. So thanks. Boom. Cool. Cut. <laughs>